In this video, we're going to talk about something called a compound inequality. Now, it, tur it turns out there are two different types of compound inequalities. There's an AND compound inequality and an OR compound inequality. In this video, we're just going to focus on the AND compound inequality. <laughs> if you look at this string of inequalities here, you'll notice that there are two inequalities. There's one here and then one here. And we can actually break this apart into two different inequalities. We have one less than or equal to x, and then we also have x is less than or equal to five. And both of these would have to simultaneously be true to be a solution to this string of inequalities. For example, if you picked, let's say, x equals seven, for, for example, x equals seven. Well, seven is greater than one, or you could say one is less than seven, so this one would be fine, but seven is not less than five, and so that would not be true. So in order to satisfy both of these inequalities, they both have to be true at the same time. That's why we call this an and compound inequality, because we would say one is less than x, and x is less than five. Both have to be true simultaneously. So here, here's what these guys look like on a number line. So basically what, what it would look like is you would have one, let's say right here. So here's one. Then you would have two, three, four, let's say right here is five. You would want the x's greater than one or past one but at the same time they would also have to be less than or equal to five. So we would have a closed dot at one, a closed dot at five, because these are also or equals to inequalities. And so these x's would satisfy this compound inequality. Now typically they're gonna be a little bit more challenging than this. There's usually some algebra you have to do. Uh, but the good news is is that we can solve these guys just like any typical inequality. The only difference is, is now that there's three pieces, there's a left, a middle, and a right, if you, let's say, want to increase the middle by a certain number, you also have to increase the left and the right by that same number. So like for, for this example, uh, to solve for x, first thing I would want to do is subtract five, but I can't just subtract five from the middle, I would also have to subtract five from the left and from the right as well. So we're dropping all three pieces equivalently. So the left hand side would be negative eight. The middle, now that the five is gone, would be just negative two x. And the right hand side would be less than or equal to eight. All right, the last step would be to divide by the variables coefficient as we're used to doing. Uh, but now we also have to be careful because we're now dividing by a negative, not just the middle, but the left-hand side and right-hand side also is being divided by negative two. And when you divide by a negative, as you well know, these <coughs> inequalities, <coughs> excuse me, are gonna have to now face the other direction. So this will be a strictly greater than as opposed to less than, and this will be greater than or equals to. Now you might be afraid that that's gonna throw off the order of the numbers um, because right now we have negative eight and eventually we have less than eight. So the order seems to flow correctly. But notice everything's gonna work out just perfectly. Negative eight divided by negative two is positive four. Negative two x divided by negative two is x. And eight divided by negative two is negative four. So have, flipping those inequalities around the other direction actually worked out very well because four now has to be greater than x and x has to be greater than negative four. So we could leave our answer like this, that's fine. Uh, I think maybe I'll take it a step farther. We can actually express this on a number line. So let's, let's close out this example by doing that. So we wanna draw all the x's that are less than four but greater than or equal to negative four. So let's plot negative four. Let's say negative four is right here. Um, negative four will get a closed dot, you'll notice, because it's or equals to. 
and we're going to go up negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Here's 4, but at 4 we'll get an open dot because this is a strict inequality right here. Okay, and, uh, and then so we're going to shade all the x's greater than negative 4 but less than positive 4. So that's another way of expressing your answer. And you know, what the heck, while, while we're at it, let's also express this in interval notation as well. We'll go bracket negative 4 up to 4 parentheses because we're including the left hand endpoint and not including the right hand endpoint. So anyways, don't, don't be too intimidated by these compound inequalities. It's just like working two independent inequalities, just doing it simultaneously at the same time.